Hello guys, welcome to our web tutor. I am Sanjay. We are learning Laravel 8 framework tutorial. This is our part number 21. Inside this video, we will see all about database basic raw queries. Also guys, if you are looking up the blog articles of GeekPHP 4, CodeIgniter 4, MySQL, Node.js, then you must visit this blogging website. Inside this blogging website, we have several categories with several interesting blog articles. Now if I back to browser, this is our blogging website where we have different different categories and inside each of the categories we have interesting blog articles. Also if I scroll to home page, we should see our interesting means latest blog post. These are recently posted blog articles. Also inside this blogging website, we have a newly added module called Create an Article. By the help of this Create an Article section, you publish your own post with online web Twitter community. Only fill all about author details and blog post details and submit for the approval to admin. Once it will be approved, then automatically get posted over this online web Twitter blogging website. So back to the topic. So in the last video, we have connected our Laravel 8 application with the database. Now inside this video, by the help of that database connection, we will create some table and we will run, run some basic raw queries. If I back to editor, now here we will see that we have opened a file called .env. It stands for environment variable files. Now inside this file, as we can see that we have connected a database with the application. Right now inside this database, we don't have any table. So we will create a table, we will insert some data, we will select some data, update and delete inside this video. Also, in the last video, we also discussed all about DB class. So if I go inside this app folder, HTTP, let's say controller, and if I open site.php, so this is the class what we have loaded inside last video. So by the help of this db class, we are going to call few methods like select, insert, update and delete. So by the help of those methods actually we can use and make cut application. So first of all, with doing any operation like insert, update, delete, we need a table. So right now we are not discussing about migrations. So in the next videos, we will see the migration concept. So for now, we are going to create a table inside this database by the help of this manual tool. So let's say table users and inside this table, we want four columns. Click on go. Here we need to provide the column name, data type name. So let's say that the first I am going to take the column as ID the second as name, this is as email address and this is the fourth column I will take as phone number. Rest we need to select the data type of these respective columns. So let's say it should be int, name should be varchar. So in case of varchar, we need to specify some length. Here we have email address. So it should be varchar. Let's say 50 characters of length. For the phone number, it should be where and let's say 30 characters in length. And also we need to fill that by default, rest three columns contain null values and the first column that is ID, it should be a primary key. Here we need to select primary and also it should be auto incremented. Now after doing all these changes, click on save button. So successfully as we can see that inside this database, we have created our first table called tbl underscore users and these are the columns we have specified. So right now, inside this table, we don't have any data. So either we can insert via code or we can insert inside this table by the help of this insert tab. So let's say that we are going to insert some data by the help of this manual tool. So this is our first dummy record what I am inserting here. So first row we have inserted, click on here and let's say that 
I again I'm going to insert some dummy data one more time click on go and here we have inserted our two dummy rows inside this table so back to editor let's say that I will create our first method and that method actually is going to select all the data from table so public function let's say get data or simply let's say get underscore users and inside this we are going to make use of this db class so in the last video also we had discussed that inside this db we have fewer methods like select insert update and delete so from those methods we are going to use the select method so let's say users equal to db and here we have the select method and inside this select the intelligence says that we need to pass the first parameter as the query second we need to pass the bindings and the third is something like a boolean value so go here let's say that select all from and we want to select the data from dvl users so i will copy the table name go here so select all from dvl users we are not putting any where condition go here and if i write print r let's say users save these changes and also for the output formatting i will add a pre tag go inside our routes folder open up call wave.php and inside this file we will create some routes so first of all let's make comment of these lines let's route here we will use get method and let's say users and inside this we are using our site controller so we need to load it first so use site this is a controller go here passing an array and inside this array let's say site it's a class and inside this class we have a method with the name called cat underscore users it's not tbl underscore users actually it should be something get underscore users so copy the method name and pasting it here so if i copy the route back to browser go here and if i type users pressing enter and i think that the development server has not been started so first of all let's start our development server so php artisan serve reload this and here as we can see that we are getting two php object and this is because we have two different rows so for each row we are getting each object so let's say that if we want to select any column value from this so simply we need to use a for each loop and by the help of that for each loop we can iterate over each record so how can we achieve back to site.php if I make comment of this line and let's say for each let's say users as a single user go here let's say user it's a single user and inside this we have a name column now what I will do simply I am printing the name and putting a br tag so if I save this page go and reload this now as we can see that these are the two users what we have inserted inside this table so this is all about a direct query to select some data but when we want to put any where condition simply we need to write where let's say it equals to and if we check our database so it value is either 1 or two so let's say that we are going to select this second user so it equals to two this is the it value actually we can put here so save this change and instead of iterating our value if i uncomment the first two lines save and if i reload this page so this is the second object 
Now in case let's say this is a dynamic value. Right now we have a static value. So for the dynamic value, what I will do simply get rid of the static value, putting a putting a question mark which is a placeholder for the dynamic value, making an array that is the bindings, and simply we need to pass the value here. So the value is something two, which is going to replace this placeholder and putting this dynamic value. So if I save, go and reload, and as we can see that the result is same. Now we have another alternative option is that instead of question mark, if we use the name to binding parameters, let's say in case, if we don't want to use question mark, then also we can use a named binding parameter. What I am referring, it is name binding parameter. So here we have a name and instead of this value, what I will do, as we know that this is an ID, which is a named parameter. So in case of ID, we want to put the value equals to two. So dynamically behind the scene, it is going to replace this binding parameter and it will bind the dynamic value equals to two. So save these changes, go and reload this page and as we can see that output remains same. So this is all about the select method of this DP class. Now if we discuss about the insert, so let's say public function, here we have the insert. So let's say method name equal to insert user and inside this method we are going to use the same DB class and this time we need to use called the insert method. As we can see the IntelliSense says that we need to pass a query and the bindings. Now by the help of this select query, now this time we have the proper concept of binding parameters. So for the first query we need to pass our query so let's say insert into tbl underscore users this is the table in the next we need to pass our let's say column name so inside our table we have name column email column and phone number for the values here we have the values and inside these values Either we can question mark means we can use question mark or we can use the name binding parameters. So simply in first case I am putting three question marks which is a placeholder and inside this array if I go inside this view and let's say toggle word wrap. So here we have three question mark. So in the first case I am passing the name for the second question mark we need to put the value for the email address and for the third question mark we need to push, put actually some mobile number value. Now if I save this change and uh, let's collect the returned value inside this user variable and let's say print a uh, its user save these changes go inside this web.php let's create a route for that insert method so route get let's say user or let's say add hyphen user we are going to use the site controller it's a class and inside this class we have a method for this insert route as insert underscore users so i am copying and pasting it here so back to browser let's type in our route called add hyphen user pressing enter the return value equals to 1 it means it returned the true value record has been inserted so I will go inside this table and reload this page now as we can see that we are getting our third row and this third row we have inserted by the help of this insert method so in the next video we will discuss all about update method as well as the delete method of this DB class Inside this video, we had discussed all about this select method and insert method. So for this video session guys, thank you for watching and have a great day.